Most of you have been asking me why I failed in fish farming. I guess I'm admitting that yes, I failed in fish farming. And therefore today I'm gonna go to somebody who has succeeded in fish farming, featured on CNN and so many other very prominent platforms to learn how he is able to succeed in fish farming right here in Accra and I failed. Come along with me if you wanna learn more about fish farming, whether tilapia farming, or even catfish and how you can do it just at your backyard. Today is a learning session for me and so it is for you. So come along and let's go learn more about fish farming. Hi Gabby, thank you so much for, 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 for giving us your time to talk about this. You're um, welcome. You know, it's, it's been very, on our channel, we normally, we don't interview people that much because we are so far in the Bono region and, you know, traveling around. Yeah. But you are in the city and there is this new term that is, I feel like, popping up in, in Ghana and in Africa in general which is urban farming. Yeah. And you're one of the people that I've seen that is doing urban farming in the city of Accra. Yeah. If you don't know, we are actually in East Legon and it's one of the, how do you describe East Legon in Accra? It's one of the places in Accra. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but not just a place, you know, you can be in, no offense, but you know, I was scared of Accra and be doing urban farming. He's doing it in East Legon. If you don't know East Legon, go and very residential and hyper, right? I would love to live in East Legon. So I'm glad you're in East Legon doing urban farming. And I know most of the people that are watching us from my channel are living abroad. They have houses here yeah. and in, in central parts. They want to do farming, right? I like your idea because my approach to farming has always been start small, you know, and but think big. Right, so starting small, shouldn't you not having the land, not having a big size of land, shouldn't limit you from doing something. Yeah. And that is why today we are here, to learn, and also not just learn, but also understand the challenges and the plan towards urban farming. Mm -hmm. So would you mind introducing yourself to the audience and also telling us a bit about what you do? All right, so my name is uh, Gabriel Latte, yeah. um, also known as Lathman Farms. Yeah. And um, we focus on fish farming. Okay. So anything catfish farming, tilapia farming, we we are the yeah, guys yeah. to help you out. Awesome, awesome. So today we want to talk about urban farming. The fact that you're in the middle of Accra and doing cat farming in your house. How has that experience been so far? Um, it, it's been bumpy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, there are a lot of um, advantages yeah. that I may have benefited. Yeah. Right before starting this whole fish farm, um, I wanted to do poultry and amongst other things. Yeah. But then the idea was big before small. Yeah, yeah. And so big before small, I need to be moving. I needed a location somewhere else. I needed to sometimes even fencing the location, having access to the location, yeah. all of that was a challenge. Security. Y yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then I decided to now set up something in my space. Okay. Now in, the, in my house, which is my backyard, at any point in time, I can just walk yeah, to my yeah, farm. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have the luxury of being able to watch everything that happens in your farm. Yeah. Second bit of it is also bits of um, education. Okay. Now, if you have a farm and the farm is maybe far away from you, yeah. you may not have the in, enough opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. But if it is in your backyard, mm -hmm. then you will be able to learn and see some of these challenges before you start on a big or a commercial scale. Yeah. And so having a farm behind you is good. And then three, most of the farmers that we do farm for, some of them, it's not because of the money. Yeah. They are not willing to farm because of money. Yeah. But some of them have, uh, they want to use it as an antidepressant. Yeah. And so then they do that. Yeah. Also, some too want to make sure that they eat quality. Yeah. And they know exactly what they are eating. Yeah. And for that reason, they do what? They yeah. start their urban farm. Yeah. Uh, no, 
that is that is very true the the third point that i will add to because i know most of you watching us are either farmers already or potential farmers and therefore as i said like you know start small and dream big backyard farming could be the place where you start small right um you know you talked about the fact that it's at, the, at your backyard so you can always have access to yeah. that means that it's the place where you can learn the place that you can make the mistakes because by then you haven't actually invested enough yeah. right so you can make the mistakes you can experiment you also know you can study what you're doing as yeah. compared to having your land maybe hours away from you as a beginner and not having access to that coming back again it's, it's interesting you know when when a lot of the people watching us see young guys like us doing what we're doing can you give us a little bit of your background in terms of before you got into um, fish farming um, before I got into fish farming yeah I had completed university yeah. and um, after completing university I was running a, a business mm -hmm. um, that was into sh shoes manufacturing yeah and um, we were doing really good, like yeah. very good. Yeah. Reason being is I also have a background in digital marketing. Nice. And so I, I was able to create good ads and yeah. then people were purchasing and stuff yeah. like that. And then depression did come in. Yeah. There was the lockdown. Yeah. And then also I lost uh, my dad and then I lost all interest in anything Everything. in relation yeah. to that. After that, a friend of mine came to visit yeah. me and then he asked me to convert the space I had as a fish farm and then I just started and then you you did it yeah and, did. and now he's all over the place you know interviews CNN you know setting farm for people that is so inspiring yeah. so you made mention that you've also completed university yes. what university did you go to I was in the premier university yeah University of Ghana University of Ghana <laughs> and what did you study so in University of Ghana funny enough yeah. I studied um, study of religions yeah. and then um, Theater arts. Yeah. When I completed, I was a TA for theater arts department. Wow. Yeah. So it was. It, it, I didn't do agric. Or you didn't do any any fisheries. When when you were coming into agriculture as a young man, didn't you? Were, 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 weren't you? I don't know. Worried about the perception of farmers, and as compared to what your friends would say when you say you're a farmer. Okay. So I would say that. Um, the most important thing to me is if I set my mind to do something, yeah. I have to make sure I do it. Yeah. So I didn't really think about what people would say. Yeah. But through my journey, mm -hmm. I faced some of these things. Yeah. First bit of it started with my mom. Yeah. My mom was like, when I started at Backyard for my mom was like, you need to get another job yeah, yeah. to do or get your business back on track. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is this what you want to do? Yeah. So that I told her, yes, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And then she decided to just be supportive. Yeah. Also, I have a lot of my colleagues who I attended the university with. Yeah. Ah, they, they do pass funny statements. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. When we meet, they're like, yeah. ah, the, fi the fish farmer. The fish farmer. The fish farmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, what helped me was they knew I was a fish farmer. So what I did was instead of us doing a get together somewhere else, I brought them to my house. Yeah. And then to my house, everybody was contributing about like 50 Ghana cities. Yeah. As at that time. Yeah, yeah. And so in my house, I take them through my farm. Yeah. They, I teach them. Yeah. So this is the fish you are seeing. This is how they look like. Yeah. We feed them. Yeah. These guys yeah. are like, oh, wow. They, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. You give them an yeah, experience. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, we take some of the fish, we degut them and everything. Then we, we package it for them. We, I grill yeah. it and then we eat over yeah. here. So because uh, prior to that, one of the one of my friends used to pass a statement like Charlie Fish Farm in the air. You eat your own fish, oh. uh, you understand? Uh, but then I sold it to those people and I, I made some money out of it. Today, as I'm speaking to you now, I am proud to be a fish farmer. Wow. Because of one, I give people things to eat, so yeah. I'm feeding people. Yeah. And then two, I am also changing the lives of other people yeah. who may be young like I am. Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes you hear stories of people who are much older. Yeah. Some of them are like teachers. Yeah. Some of them are like, they've done different businesses and other things. Yeah. And then some of them are even just sick. Yeah. And then you come, you set up a farm for them. And then they'll tell you, you this whole thing has changed my life. So urban farming, yes, the bit of the education is very important. Yeah. The education bit too did help me a lot mm -hmm. because 
because of the I think because of the university I did attend, yeah. there was a way of thinking. Yeah. And that way of thinking is when you do anything and you are from the university, yeah. maintain quality. Yeah. You a understand? Certain standard yes. of production. So yeah. maintain that. Yeah. And then also I because of the, the same university, I was able to also assess other training programs online. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, I knew, okay, this is available. Yeah. So I joined a program at the University of Hawaii. Mm-hmm. It was under fish farming yeah. to learn. Yeah, just learn. To learn. Yeah. No, that, that, that's amazing. And I hope you guys are, are watching us and thinking about, okay, you know, if, if Gabby is doing this, I need to step out there. He's finished university. He has his own business. And he now says he's a proud fish farmer. We need more youth like yourself. You know, unemployment, as we know in Africa, is skyrocketing. Until we take the step and we do something to feed ourselves, then we, we, are, we are not moving forward. So, so I think this is very inspirational. And thank you for telling us your story. I want to chip in yeah. something. Go ahead. Currently, in my business, I have eight employees. Wow. Eight employees who pay them every single month. Yeah. This same backyard farm yeah. is now... Now I pick people from the universities yeah. who studied marine and fisheries, who studied certain courses yeah. for national service. Yeah. I don't pay them the 559. Yeah. I know it's not enough for them. Yeah. I pay them more. More than that. And then I have people who are full-time employees yeah. as part of the business. And that is because <clears throat> you, you nurture that small thing. Yeah. And now, and then aside all of these things, as I have said, there are other people too who you are not necessarily employing them, but you've given them the avenue to be able to create employment for themselves and then other people as well. You know, there's a saying like, teach people how to fish. You're literally teaching people yeah. how to fish now. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <Right>. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's amazing. So you didn't just, you know, give yourself an employment. You also employed other people, eight yeah. more other people. So imagine if you're watching us, wherever you are and you feel like you're not employed, you're thinking about going into farming, you know, maybe you're even at this stage thinking about yourself, but don't forget, you could be the reason why somebody is also not employed. You are the hope that somebody's looking up to, to be able to give that person maybe a stepping stone, you know, to what they could become in future. So I hope this interview really inspires you. The last question I'll ask you before we bring this to an end. Most people that are watching are like, we are inspired. Like, if we want to start this, but we don't have enough money, how much do you think it would take for somebody to start a small backyard, which is maybe less than 200 um, catfish in their house? You wouldn't need more than 3,000 3, 3, Ghana cities to be able to start that farm. Okay, so with 3,000 Ghana cities, you'll be able to have what and what and what? You, you can have your fish tank, okay. you can have your fingerlings, okay. you can have your feed, your feed, and then you can have some training also from in you. there, okay. and then water inputs that you will be using to, to culture your fish. Amazing, guys. You had 3,000 cities. It's like what? Maybe $150 or so. Um, take the opportunity, guys. Contact him. Um, you know, I am not an expert in, in fish farming, and that is why I'm here to introduce you guys. I know about a week ago, somebody actually commented why I don't start a fish farm. I used my first two years to do a lot of experimental, and now my focus is very clear farming in Africa, we are focusing on good farming, and that's why it's important to blend with people like um, Gabby, who has also focused on something so that you guys can have variety and options to be able to choose. He has spent his time and life, capital and investment to build the knowledge that he has now. So if his fish farming is something that you're interested, then please contact. Um, can you share your YouTube channel um, with, with, with my, my followers as well? All right, so my channel is Latman Farms. That is a L-A-R-T m-a-n l-a-r-t-m-a-n and then farms yeah and then when you just click on it you see me nicely standing there <laughs> to share information with you yeah with a lot of education videos so of education yeah, videos yeah 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 so guys go go check it out even you might not need it today but tomorrow so check it out do subscribe support him as well let's support the young guys that are putting this knowledge because what we are doing here is going to be here for the next and next and next generation to build upon it so thank you so much gavi and it was a pleasure hosting you here in farming in africa i would also say thank you so much for 
given me also the opportunity to also share whatever thing we are doing mm -hmm. and then um, I would say that God bless you for all the things you've been doing for each and every one of us. God bless you, sir. Same to you, too. Same <laughs> to you, man. <laughs>